What is up guys, Max here, and welcome back to another tutorial. Now in today's tutorial, we'll be making this pretty cool, I guess on the previous episode animation, so I guess post a video or something, this animation could play out on the previous episode. Your logo pops up, just like that, and then on the previous episode, and it opens up to blackness where your video would be right there. And let's figure out how to make this thing inside of After Effects, as always. So, um, here's the project I was working on. It is the you know final thing, blah blah blah. But we're gonna do a whole new project. So let's get started. All right. So first things first, we need a new composition. So right click in your project panel, click New Composition. Let's see, Comp One. Let's call it Final Comp. Um, width 1920 by 1080. Frame rate 60 frames per second. Duration 15 seconds long, pretty good for me. Click OK. Boom. First off, we need a logo on the screen here. But we want to make it to where we can just change the logo out at any point in time. So we need another composition. Right click, new composition, call it logo comp. And let's make it, uh, I don't know, a thousand. No, 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 no. I guess uh, 800 pixels by. 800 pixels so it's a square just like that cool now we need a logo so let's go online and type gaming logo png just something clear you can use your own logo it doesn't matter i know the one that i used in the previous animations on here somewhere this looks kind of neat i'm not even sure find something really quick is it a png it is view image right click save as Save it to the desktop and boom. Drag it into our logo composition right here. Boom. We now have a PNG logo inside of our composition. Sweet. Now go back to Final Comp. Drag your logo comp into this composition. I guess right hand the layer panel is fine. And now it's sweetly onto the thing right here. So scale it down just a little bit just to be in the center. And that's where we want it. So what we're going to do is click down this little arrow, trans transform, keyframe the scale, and keyframe the rotation. Now grab these keyframes and drag them down the timeline just really quick. I don't know, one second is fine. Bring the scale down to zero and the rotation down to negative 180. So when it comes on, it's rotating on. And the reason we made a composition is we can go to logo comp, double click, you can drag on any logo you want, and boom, scale it in. It doesn't matter. Delete the old one, go to Final Comp. You have a new logo that will do the rotational stuff, as always. So, with my motion plugin, I use it on a daily basis. Feel free to download it. There's a link in the description. But we'll take this uh, speed graph and move it up to about 80. And what this plugin does is let you control the graph right here so we don't have to manually do it. So what it's gonna do is when it goes on, let's trim our comp a little bit, RAM preview, it's gonna just like that. But this logo is a little strange and, and the, uh, the cord clips off right here, so we're gonna fix that really quick with a little technique called masking. So grab your pen tool, click your layer, and we'll draw a mask like this. It's kind of like a curved edge boom 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 just like that now it's gone click down on the arrow click down on your mask and click inverted your mask now the edge is going to be soft or a hard edge we can feather the edge a little bit like that now it looks like it just kind of fades away into nothing quick fix makes me feel better just like that really sweet logo goes onto the screen we can change it in and out as per needed. Now we need those really cool circles that pop up behind it. And right before we do this, go to our window, align, and let's actually put this logo in the center by aligning it just like this. Pretty. We can dock this up here for more use. Now we need these circles that we just talked about that pop up behind the logo. So let's make them. First things first, go up here to your shape tool right here. Click and hold and go down to ellipse tool. Mine was already on the circle because I used it before, but if it's on a square or something, click and hold, go down to the circle. Now let's drag out a circle, hold shift, and um, it doesn't matter what size it is, click it, grab your anchor point tool right here, drag this anchor point, hold command to ping it to the center, 
right there. Let's just go ahead and align this um, circle to the middle of our composition with our align tool. And hit S on your keyboard, click zero on your scale, keyframe it, go down your timeline a little bit and scale it up until it's all the way past the screen, right about there. And what we'll do next is actually go to our motion tool, do the same thing before, highlight both the keyframes and drag this out some, just like this. So, what's gonna happen behind it is if we move this back, let's kinda like trim this comp down, move this back, we're gonna have a thing just like that. Maybe move it down some in time so the logo comes on first a little bit. Cool, and what we can do is actually change the color. Let's do like a neat color scheme on this eh. hue saturation, drop it onto our logo. I just want to change the logo color really fast. Make it blue instead. And go to our fill on this and change it to... That gray is kind of cool. And what we'll do now is Command D, the shape layer. I'm um, click U and move it down the timeline a little bit. Change the color one more time. Command D one more time, move it down the timeline, click U just so we can see the key just click U so just so we can see the keyframe. And we'll change the color one more time with the fill option right up here. It's a cool color. It's kind of neat. So it does this. Just like that. Kind of go down some, spread them out just a little bit. Pretty fast, slow them down some by moving the keyframes down. So it's more of a two second animation. Then that way we can actually move them back in time to start right on frame zero right here. Just like that. Pretty, pretty sweet. Nice. Now click U on your logo comp. Um, highlight both these keyframes, Command C, V. Highlight both these keyframes, Command C. Go down your timeline and paste it right about here. So, goes up like that, goes away like that. But we want it to rotate the other way, so type 360 on this. So it rotates all the way around this way. Just like that. Pretty, pretty cool. All right, next what we're gonna do is close these down uh, command C, command V, and move this over just like this. Take layer four, put it on top, put it on top like that. And let's highlight all of these and change their color to yellow. So we can see our next transition really easily on the screen. So it starts to go away, stays there for half a second, moves back in time, and boom just like that and real quick like we can actually start changing the colors of these which would be really cool let's do like a brighter brighter yellow change the red to I don't know some kind of green change this one to I guess purple doesn't matter doesn't matter too much. So it does that. And this is where the text is going to come on the screen. So if we look at our previous composition um, in VLC Media Player, it did something like this. Comes on. Just like that. I think I will change it to like an orange on the final color because the orange was looking pretty nice. Just like that, cool. Now we need our new text that's gonna be on the screen that says on the next episode or something like that. So grab your text tool, go on the, and we're using a font called Modi Thorson Condensed, I think, Condensed Italic. Italic. Um, I'll leave a link in the description to download this font. I'm pretty sure I got it off the font.com, so pretty easy. Um, command D this text, drag it down right here on the next 
on the next or on the previous command D episode just like that um, we made three different text layers pretty simple then what we'll do is grab all of them hit R on our keyboard and rotate them this way somewhat kind of space them out like that it doesn't really matter grab them all move them to the center of the screen it's a pretty decent size I guess we could probably scale them up a little bit yeah it's pretty good move them around a little bit just like that and go down Actually, you know, let's, let's, let's scale them up a lot more. Just kind of obnoxiously big. If you don't know what you're reading, it's on the previous episode. Just like that. Now we need to animate them onto the screen. So they're going to be coming onto the screen right about here. They need to be on screen right there. So highlight all of these. Click P on your keyboard. On and uh, click all the hour or stopwatches to uh, put a keyframe. Stays for about a second, and keyframe them again. And now go to your beginning of your timeline right here, or towards the beginning of your timeline. And let's grab this and move it off screen. Move this one off screen right here, and move this one off screen right here. So it's gonna animate on like this. Boom, stay and then continue off the screen on the next animation. Just like that. I think I had it in reverse in the last one, but it doesn't matter. Shoom. Sweet. Now highlight all these keyframes, go to your motion tool and just use your speed editor, which edits our speed graph like before. You can see if you go to a uh, speed graph, all the graphs have been edited. And if you edit it in live, you can actually see, and or you just highlight like this. And do this. See how it edits the graph live. Slow transition, fast transition. And 80 is pretty good. So highlight all of these. Do something like this. And go to 80. I like 80. Doesn't really matter, I guess. Boom. Whoosh. On the previous episode. Awesome. And what we need now is that color transition thing that we saw, the, the stripes going across the on the previous episode. So that's really easy. So go to Project Panel, um, right-click New Composition, call it Stripes. And let's make the width 1920, height by 1080, and click OK. Duration, 15 seconds, just like this animation, and boom. What we're going to do is actually grab a rectangle tool and draw a little skinny line like this. Um, let's align, oh, it doesn't need to align, let's put the uh, anchor point right there somewhere, it doesn't truly matter. And what we're gonna do is fill it with, I guess, uh, some kind of color. Let's do like bright colors, I don't, I don't know, it doesn't really matter. Then Command D, this shape, move it over. Make sure that it's overlapping a hair so there's no gaps. And change it to blue. Command D, move this one over. Change it to red. Command D, move this one over. Change it to, yeah, green is great. Command D, move this over. Change it to white. Command D, move this over. Change this to black, or change it to gray. D, move this over. And Command D, move this one over. What's not yellow? What we not used? Pink. Command D, move this one over. Trying to use like a bunch of pretty obviously primary colors? I'm not sure, honestly. Just kind of going for it. 
Alrighty then. Sweet. And I've been just, I think it ended up copying three shapes, but I mean, it doesn't matter at all. So highlight all of these and command C V and move these ones down until they overlap this a little bit. I think you can see where we're going with this. Now highlight all of these, command C V, move these down, make sure they overlap a hair. Highlight all of these, command C V, move it down, make sure it overlaps a little bit. And we'll do it one more time just because we're nuts. Command C V make sure it overlaps just like this and sure I like that <laughs> that looks crazy that's gonna be pretty intense animation so right click new null object right there looks pretty good um, then highlight all of these just you know grab all of these Grab your parenting tool right here, this little squiggly, and parent it to the null. Then what we can do after that is highlight all of these shapes and lock them so they're just kind of off screen. Doesn't really matter anymore. And grab your null object. We could even, oh, they're all locked now. Doesn't matter. We could, we could probably turn all these shapes off of this little Heidi Man nose thing. Just like that. Boop. And grab your null object. All the shapes are hidden. Click P on your keyboard. And let's move it over real quick. Because it's parented, all these shapes will you know, align to that. Um, keyframe your position. Go down to 15 seconds. And move this thing. Oh, don't scale it. Um, move the... I don't want to scale it. Move this all the way down. It's a... Uh, is this your X? Yeah, it's the X. So let's just roll this thing like crazy. Type on a negative 5,000. Ooh, not even close. Negative 10,000. Negative 15,000. Too far. Too far! Move it back. So basically, it's gonna like work its way just like that. Now go back to your final composition. What we're gonna do is right-click um, or highlight on or the previous on the previous episode. Right-click, pre-compose, call it previous. Everything's all caps for some reason. Click OK. Um, grab stripes. Put it on top of previous right here and uh, go to track mat up oh, nope excuse me put stripes under previous make sure track mat is showing if it's not showing make sure your modes are turned on turned on in columns so in your layer panel right here you can right click in the gray area and go to modes shows a TRK mat option and alpha mat previous basically the shape above it is what it will show through so since we have nothing but stripes on top of this we create an alpha mat with um, the previous so only the stripes show through the text which is pretty cool and when it goes it's gonna do that on screen pretty wicked yeah so go to stripes go to layer layer style let's add it this way drop shadow boom distance right here kind of far change the angle I think in the original animation I had a white it's kind of neat go to normal on the uh, blend mode size down to zero opacity up to 100 percent looks pretty wicked on the white colors but if we ran preview this really quick And we're going to have an opening that reveals a transparent layer for our final animation. Logo. RAM preview is freaking out, but we get the picture. Cool. So 
all we need now is these shapes we created. So highlight all of these, um, Command C V, go down on our timeline. Yet again, I think if we actually highlight them from the bottom up, Command C V, nope, or top down, Command C V. Hey, if you highlight from top down, it'll copy over normally. Cool. Um, we need this to kind of go out like this. So, like that. And there needs to be one more shape that is a transparent layer that opens up to nothing. So, it'll just be checkered board from After Effects. So, we can render it out as an alpha channel for our Premiere projects. So, Let's change these colors, because we're not boring. The fill, that's kind of cool. Change this green, ooh, to black, yeah. Dark gray. Change this to white, let's do white. And what we need now is a duplicate um, shape layer nine, command D, which is that final circle, move it down some. Let's change it to a red layer so we can tell that's our alpha matte shape. Now what you're gonna do is actually highlight these three transitions. So we can change their colors to know they're different and right click pre-compose and call this uh, circle transition. Click okay. Um, and we know it starts right here. So we can trim our comp, command or option bracket to trim the comp down just like that. Um, or we can jump into here and actually, you know, composition trim comp to work area and go back to final comp. And it's gonna be right here where it goes. So just like that. So this one starts right there. This one needs to be down here. So. What's gonna happen is we are going to close off all of these, just like this, and go to alpha inverted map on our circle transition composition. So it is only showing when it's not touching the new circle that is appearing, which is this final shape, which is gonna be a blatant red shape. So this blatant red shape will be the whole. So, alpha mat, inverted shape mat, um, and turned this orange. See this orange? It's still showing. We want to take this shape and actually turn it off. Actually, we can take these shapes and move them back some. So, it's going to be gone at this point. See? It's transparent. But it turns off right there too early so how do we fix that pretty simple actually um, duplicate your shape layer 10 drag it above shape layer 4 which is the orange on the back and do the same thing um, alpha mat inverted mat so it's gonna just create a hole there's the hole and the orange is still there so boom just like that and I think in my original this was a 10 second animation um, but we turned it into a five second animation, which I think is a lot, you know, more efficient. And what you would do, really simple. Um, project, new composition, pre, or er, uh, mock up. Click OK. Drag your final comp into it. Here it is. Five seconds. Double click. Composition, trim, comp to work area. Go to mock up. And let's drag some footage of some sorts. It doesn't matter what it is. I'll just drag some stock footage in real quick. Just like this, drag some footage in here. 4K pug clip, like always. It's a go to. Um, when it goes out, just like this, it's going to reveal footage un under it. So, just like that. So you can reveal your previous episode, and if you're really, um, real and feel, if you're really feeling fancy, you could always jump in here, jump into previous, and just retype this to next. So, on the next episode, and 
reposition them in some fashion. Doesn't matter. Whatever you like. He actually changes the black now so we can see them on screen. On the previous episode. Goes out. Just like that. So let's try our mock-up out. Let's just kind of like render this out and see how it looks. Just like that. Sweet. All right, so how do we render this out to make it look awesome and ready for Premiere Pro editing? So what we're gonna do is go to Effects and Presets, type CC Force Motion Blur, which is gonna give us a really nice blurred motion on all the stuff. You can actually increase the shutter angle to like 360 or something, and it'd be even more blurry, which that might be a little bit too much, but who cares, let's do it. Composition, add to render queue, change your output module right here. Mine's preset to this, but what you're gonna do is click, it's gonna normally say lossless right here, but click the blue lossless, or if it's already here, that's great, click this. Um, make sure it's set to RGB plus alpha, um, right here, and click OK, which is a lossless with alpha, which is, it renders a transparent PNG, and we'll render this mock-up right here, and click render. Alright, and the render is finally done. Sat here silently for a while. It's okay. So let's open up Premiere Pro real fast. Save this file, just like that. And just drop it on some footage. Now you can use this footage in Final Cut Pro, Sony Vegas, Premiere Pro. I'm just happening, I'm just using Premiere Pro today, so. So, new project, just test, doesn't matter. Just drag our uh, footage into uh, our project panel. Open up our project panel somewhere. Drop it anywhere, doesn't matter. Um, we have our mock-up right here. And we need some previous episode footage like before. Let me find some stock content. This duck will be great. Um, so right click, um, new sequence from clip, just, just to get something started. Hey, there's a duck. So drag our mock-up onto the screen, and um, so if you're you know watching something, actually you know what we need more stock. So this right here, this Brooklyn Bridge footage that I took one day. So basically, you just finished your episode, you're good to go. You need some stuff to happen, so it's gonna be boom on the previous episode. A duck. So boom, really cool graphics to have for uh, your stuff. Only thing I might change with the animation is I would possibly slow down the stripes because they're moving really fast. You know, I just realized something really fast. See this little edge right here? If we go back into After Effects and see our composition settings, it's a little bit on the edge right here. Composition, composition settings, Width, 1902. It's supposed to be 1920. Why do I go do that? It's crazy. It would have rendered out and covered this whole thing up, but it doesn't. But just to make me feel better, I'll scale it up a little bit. Um, so, yeah. So this is really cool graphics just to have in your arsenal. A little tool. You can drop in, change the logo really quickly. And yeah, so I'll, uh, in the project file, like I said before, feel free to download it. I'll include the 10 second version and the 5 second version for your needs. So get the font. Download the project file, have fun, and as always, please give this video a thumbs up, please subscribe, and uh, I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.